Oh my, we're gonna have to talk about this. Okay, so Heidelberg Cornell. Don't use it this way for best results. Use this way. So I did a video a ways back on Hydroquinone. So I am still getting DMs and messages on my social media on how to use Hydroquinone. So I thought I would do a video based on my 12 years of experience treating clients with acne and hyperpigmentation on the pro tips of how to use Hydroquinone and some things to avoid with Hydroquinone. Okay, pro tip number one. Okay, so if you're using hydroquinone for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or acne scores, scars and you are still breaking out, then make sure you avoid using benzoyl peroxide or resorcinol. Instead, you can use salicylic acid or lactic acid. And if you don't have sensitive skin, you can also use glycolic acid. And this leads me to my next pro tip. And you can actually use this with AHAs. Studies have shown that hydroquinone works really well with different AHAs. So that includes anything from glycolic acid, kojic acid, malic acid, and you can also use it with mandelic acid. And the unique thing about mandelic acid is not only is it hydrating and exfoliating, it actually prevents or inhibits pigment formation. Now, if you want to use it with antioxidants such as vitamin C, you can, however, here is the caveat. You can use the vitamin C in the morning and then use your hydroquinone in the evening. For those of you who have sensitive or reactive skin, you may want to avoid using the L-ascorbic form, um, which is the actual vitamin C, and maybe use a vitamin C derivative in the morning and then use your hydroquinone in the evening. It is fairly common to see that when you start using hydroquinone that the hyperpigmentation or the scar that you're using on will actually get darker. Okay, pro tip number two. Do not use this if you are breastfeeding or pregnant or planning to become pregnant because if you do get pregnant, you're gonna have to discontinue this. Okay, so pro tip number three is that if you're using hydroquinone for an age spot or melasma, make sure that you're actually covering the entire area and not just that one specific spot. The reason is, is because now you can have uneven shadows based on where you put the hydroquinone. And another thing is, especially if you're starting to see that it's starting to grow, you may not see the hyperpigmentation that is underneath the skin that is eventually forming into a patch. So you wanna get all of that entire section versus that one specific area, especially if it's an age spot, not, not an acne spot but a age spot or melasma. If you are finding these tips help helpful, then make sure you share this video with someone you know that may be considering using hydroquinone or is using hydroquinone. Now, we're gonna go on to the next pro tip. Okay, pro tip number four. So, if you're using hydroquinone, you want to use it consistently. So after you get your desired results, which is usually you wanna do it for two to three months, you don't want to use it any more than four to five months. So after you get the, your desired results and you need to take a break, you need to step back from using the hydroquinone and then you can replace it by using during that break, using other tyrosinase inhibitors and that could be vitamin C, kojic acid, mulberry extract, licorice extract, daishi or shiitake mushrooms. There's a whole array of tyrosinase inhibitors that you can use to keep the pigments from forming again. And then once you want to go back to it, then you can go back to using the hydroquinone. So during this break, you can use some more gentle forms of tyrosinase inhibitors that can inhibit pigment formation. Go back to using the hydroquinone and make sure that you are consistent. Okay, last one, pro tip number five. So of course, make sure you are vigilant about using sunscreen and just staying out of the sun because the UV rays not only makes the melasma or hyperpigmentation darker, it can actually cause inflammation, which then can cause more hyperpigmentation. So look for a sunscreen. For example, this Lyra here, my, my viewers know I always talk about it all the time. It has 21% zinc oxide, so it's naturally anti-inflammatory and it has tyrosinase inhibitors in there. Avoid sunscreens that are chemical, especially oxybenzone and avobenzone. Those are no, those are very um, known for being common irritants to 
to the skin, especially if your skin is sensitized, whether it's your naturally have sensitive skin or because you're using hydroquinone. So I would look for a sunscreen that also had moisturizers in there because some people have said with regular use of using hydroquinone, it tends to dry out their skin. So uh, the link will be in the description below if you are interested in this sunscreen. So if you want to know about more treatment options or more pro tips, then make sure you go ahead and subscribe. And if you haven't caught that video about hydroquinone, you can watch that video here because... Make a visit out of Skincare as a Saints!